Oh, boy. Hey, y'all. Hey, how y'all doing? Usually, I be sipping on some tea with these um, sip and talks with Sigourney. But today, cheers to this protein shake. I'm just not leaving the gym. And, yeah. As I was talking to one of my homegirls last week and this week, something that I saw reoccurring in both of our lives is the idea that we never pictured our life was going to look the way it looks. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. A lot of people think, dang, when I was a teenager, when I was in college, when I was in my 20s, when I was in my 30s or 40s or 50s, I never pictured my life and how it was gonna look, and it literally looks so different than I imagined. And we were just talking and just thinking that, you know, about our dreams and what we had planned, and a little bit of my testimony is, I graduated from college, and I immediately needed to make a decision because I also had a lot of student loans, so I could go to a graduate school program um, and get my loans deferred and continue that process in psychology or I could go find me a job. So I literally um, tried to look up graduate schools. Nothing really felt pretty good to me, you know. Um, I went back to work. So I was working two jobs in my family's home, literally working two jobs. I was working at Publix and Outback. And I was just like, um, yeah, this ain't it. This ain't it. This is not it, baby. And I chose the military route. And looking back, I just never thought I was going to be a military chick. Like, anybody who knows me, even my recruiter used to say, like, girl, you going to join the Air Force? You're going to join the military? Because I'm such a girly girl. Like, granted, I can get dirty, you know what I'm saying, when it's time to get dirty on them. But naturally, my personality is very girly. And I understand that about myself. So, me taking the route of being in the military um, just was very unorthodox for me. Um, for my family, for my friends, and you know, I literally like looking back, the military was the best decision for me. It was because I was untamed, I was undisciplined, I was a good chick, like, I ain't really, you know, start no trouble or nothing like that. That wasn't my issue. My issues were internally, it was the attitude, it was the pop offness, it was the hey, I don't really care what you got to say, really and truly, like. I really don't care and it was that mindset that led me I feel like God needed to discipline me in that manner of me joining the military and so I say all of that to say everything that we go through everything we've been through it just it may not look how we envisioned and how we thought of but it's for a reason and the route that we take is the route that God already had in plan for us and so for me God has just been showing me girl you're not in control girl what you in control of you can barely control yourself how you gonna control the situation how you gonna control this person how you gonna control this friend how you gonna no you're not in control of nothing nothing at all what are you controlling and I just didn't realize how much I try to control situations and try to make it work for me in a sense and try to make things happen and try to sometimes essentially kind of force things and God has just been showing me surrenderance 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 surrendering your life in which you thought and how it was gonna look that I never even told you surrendering that to you and surrendering my my thoughts to you and surrendering my actions to you and God has been showing me just surrender it to me and I can sit here and say, oh, what if I would have pursued psychology and got a degree? I literally would be so stressed out. I would be above my head stressed out if I had chose that route as a therapist. And I'm not saying I don't ever want to be a therapist, but I kind of know what I want to specialize in versus just going in open therapy. You know what I mean? Open general is what they call it for therapy. Um, but I know what I want to specialize in. But if I had just took that route, I can barely handle my own problem. When you talk about talking to somebody else about their issues, look, I'm gonna be like, mm. baby, I don't know what to tell you. Girl, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I mean? I'll be a therapist to where I'll be like, girl, no, he didn't. <laughs> girl, he did what? Chad, some mess. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just wouldn't be able to handle that responsibility. Because, girl, mm -mm, that's too much. Get somebody else. <laughs> we 
we all have this life planned out and we all have dreams and aspirations and goals and things that we just know it's going to happen. But I want to tell you, surrender your plans to God. Surrender your plans to God. Do not try to make it happen. Do not try to control the situation. Literally, surrenderance is so important. And I know we have goals and we have aspirations and we have things that, you know, we really want to do. But if it's not a part of God's will, it's just not. And the thing is, God's will is the best will for us. For me, I always want to be an entrepreneur. I tell this every single day to Jesus. I be like, Jesus. Baby, you know I'm a natural born leader, you know what I'm saying? You know I got that vibes, you know what I'm saying? You know I'm trying to be a little business owner or whatever. And God be like, you not ready. And I be like, okay, you right, but still. <laughs> so that's why he's giving me a job to where I can do both. But if he was to be like, okay, do your little entrepreneurship thing, do your little entrepreneurship thing, and let me show you. I'd be stressed, I'd be broke, and I'd be busty. Busty, crusty, and dusty type looking. You know what I'm saying? So God literally has been showing me, surrender everything to me. Like, I know you had this vision. And even for women, I feel like we put a, a stamp on when we should get married and when we should have kids and how we should look and our body and our image. And when things just ain't, you know, lining up with the timeline, we just, you know, get all discombobulated and stuff. And so I really just want to encourage you, like, surrender your plans to God, man. I have been... In a season, a very long season, and a very just ghetto season of surrenderance. And it's messy and it's nasty and it's not fun. And it's not like, yay, I'm surrendering this to you. Yay, I'm surrendering that to you. And then God be like, okay, I want you to surrender that, 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 that. And I'm like, look, nah. <laughs> You're asking for a lot here. So that's just where I'm at. And I'm at the point now to where, you know what? Not my will, but your will be done, God. Like, you know what's best for me. You know when I need it, how I need it, and where I need it at in my life. And I can sit here and control the situation, but that's too much work. That's too much work. And I don't got that type of that type of life in me. Uh-uh. I just don't. So, I guess the whole point of the video um, is to encourage you. As I encourage myself to, your life may not look like how you envisioned it. You may not be working the job that you, you know, you wanted to work, or you may not be pursuing the degree, or you may not be having your third child by now, or you may not be, you know, having all the luxuries that other people are enjoying or that you are perceiving that they are enjoying, but enjoy your season. God has you wherever he has you for a reason. There is something that you need to learn. There is something that I need to learn in my season. And I can sit here and think, this is what I need. This is what I need. This is what I need. But really and truly, all I need is God. I need God. I need people around me who care about me. I need just pure love. And once you have that, that's all you need. All the other stuff is just extra. And God, what I found, let me tell you what I found. I found that you could be like, okay, God, I want this. And it don't happen when you want it to happen. But let me tell you what I learned. Let me tell you, let me, let me, let me put you on to the game. Let me put you on to the game. What I've learned is that God can take you a different route, but you still get to the same destination. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> That's a word. That's a word. He will literally make it to where you get to that same destination. You just took a different route. I thought I was going to go for my bachelor's degree straight to my master's. But what God did was, uh-uh. Because I already know them student loans going to have you all the way messed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you take this route, join the military. Whoop, you pop on in. You get your education and you get it for free. Mm. <laughs> and you get it for free. And, <laughs> and you make so much money from the Air Force to where you can actually pay off all your student loans, all of your car, and you can become debt free. Ooh. Hallelujah. Yes. And so that's how God works. That's how he does things. It like in our human mind, we just think we know what's best. Like we just be swearing up and down. We just know what's best for us. And it's God. God just be looking down like, no, you don't. At least for me. I don't know how God talk to you. But for me, he be like, girl, no, you don't. Like, hush. <laughs> you still talking to me about this? No, not right now. You know what I'm saying? So I have just come to a place of surrenderance. And when I surrender, a part of me feels relieved. A part of me feels like, 
you know like i don't have to make it happen i don't have to you know chase after it and force things it can just come to me and i like that feeling i like that feeling a lot but what i'm not saying on the flip side is that i'm just over here chilling now one thing about me now i'm gonna I'm a work hard that's one that's one thing i feel like god really blessed me with just the spirit of ambition and i like i like that um you know it does have its pros and cons but i think that while we're waiting on confirmation and while we're waiting on things to occur really and truly working at whatever season or whatever job or whatever relationship or whatever friendships we currently have instead of waiting until we get to this point and then all of a sudden we want to work hard so i'll use myself as an example because again this is just a transparent moment but um <laughs> okay i'm sorry y'all <laughs> okay so after uh i did like my book launch and i did um my book bundle deal i kind of took a you know a break and kind of like a breather and i was just like again back at it um i want to be an entrepreneur god these are you know my desires these are my dreams this is what i'm gonna do why you you know you know why you ain't making it happen and during that season i wasn't really applying myself the way i should be in my business and god kind of checked me on something he was like you know you ain't even doing it right now and I was like, what you, what you mean? He was like, you're not even giving your business 100% right now. And you think I'm going to put you in it full time and you ain't even giving it 100% now? Wait, it's a choice? Like, if I throw you into entrepreneurship, you're going to give it 110. You got to show up for yourself every single day. So if you're not even doing that now, why would you think I would advance you to the next season? And I said, ooh. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Okay, God, this is literally how I talk to God. I be like, okay, like, I get it. Like, you didn't have to do me like that, Jesus. And he just showed me, like, you're not ready. Like, you think you're ready, but you're not. And it's different pressures and different levels to this. Like, do it on the level in which you are at. Be excellent in the season in which you have right now. And then I can advance you. And for me, it just causes me to, first of all, I'm going to take a step back to breathe. And to stop being anxious for the next level. To embrace where I'm at. Embrace the, the beautiful season that I'm in. The fact that I can work a full-time job and come home and work on business. The fact that I can see my family. I'm in Georgia, so I can literally drive home on the, you know, on the holidays and stuff like that. The fact that I have a loving community around me. The fact that I love a church out here. The fact that I have friends. The fact that I am just so loved around it's just so many people that love me and i just kind of have to remind myself of my season and remind myself of the fact that it's okay it doesn't look like how i envisioned i'm not where i want to be in this area but it's okay i'm grateful for where i'm at and i want to encourage you to also do the same thing to count your blessings count the things that are working for you count the things that make sense to you count the things that god is doing in your life and stop looking at what you don't have stop comparing yourself to this person that person and look at you know what god if you don't do nothing else if you don't do nothing else i'm blessed i am so blessed i got a vehicle i got an apartment i got a house i got kids i got a husband i got you know, my limbs are here. I'm talking, I'm breathing, I got food on the table. It's the small, small things that really and truly matter. So as I encourage you, child, it's for me too. <laughs> it's for me too, but we gonna get through this. And we are gonna be grateful for what we have. And we are gonna learn that our life may not look how we envision, but you know what? That's all right. That's all you right. You need encouragement, or you know somebody else who may need encouragement? Please write into my foundation, Letters for Life, where I encourage individuals by writing a free handwritten letter of encouragement. Y'all better come get it now. Look, 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 look. You better come get it. As always, I love you, but most importantly, though, God loves you. I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.